Hi, I'm Michelle Wallig, and I'm here to present Democratizing Machine Learning on the SQL platform for you today. So here's the abstract for the session. It's really trying to make sure that our customers, in whatever role they have, who have data, um, have access to machine learning services in different environments, whether it's on-premise, a hybrid from on-premise and cloud or a cloud-only solution. And so I'm also going to share with you a preview that we're doing for Azure SQL for managed instance that is for our customers who are wanting to modernize, have not yet, um, onto a, an Azure environment with their data. But I really want to spend some time in the beginning to talk about the very unique processes that machine learning services requires. Um, it, it's not like any other application development. It's got its own life cycle. It's got its own demands in terms of infrastructure, tools, different tools, languages like Python and R that are used differently by different uh, roles within the uh, data science team. Um, as well as access to a platform that provides both access to Microsoft packages and frameworks, as well as open source packages and frameworks, such as those listed here. We'll go through a whole process around how you're building the models, uh, getting the data, building the models, creating the models, deploying them into production, and updating them as new data and new patterns um, are, arise. I'm a 15-year veteran of Microsoft, and I'm here uh, to provide the machine learning services across multiple products and services shown here. So the goal and agenda for today, as I mentioned, is really to introduce you to the whole data science machine learning process, what's very specific about it, what is its special needs, what are the different um, tools and technologies, as well as the scenarios that you might need to solve. So it's understanding there's a whole process around those things. Then we'll actually look at some of the data platform. We'll demonstrate some scenarios using notebooks in those technologies, and then I'll point you to some other resources to learn more. So in the agenda, I'm going to touch on five different things. We're going to just walk through the data science process, um, who uh, is involved in that data science process, what does a team data science t look like. Uh, then I want to uh, look at the entire SQL platform and understand when you're going to use certain products and in what scenarios. We'll have some examples I'll walk through to get you started. I'm going to talk about a preview that I'm leading right now called Machine Learning on Managed Instance. We're in the Azure uh, SQL Managed Instance Platform, we have now machine learning services available. And then finally, in order to give access to everybody, all our customers, we'll be reviewing a new user experience that'll help people get started quickly if they aren't a data science expert. So democratization is really making sure that it's accessible to everyone. We have data everywhere, and I want to make sure machine learning is available to people anywhere, and that they can use it against structured data, unstructured data, um, and build the models that will help them do their job better or to solve business problems. So first, we'll understand this unique process that's called machine learning and building those applications. Um, the environment itself will need a few things access to the right languages such as R and Python. So R has been around for a long time and over a decade and about seven years ago, Microsoft purchased Revolution Analytics, which had a, a lot of um, R language based assets uh, such as algorithms, models, um, et cetera, that, that would be valuable to our customers. R is, is usually the language used by data scientists um, because it does have all the statistical algorithms available. There's native R out in the open source. There's other versions of R as well outside of Microsoft. And then Python is a language that has become very popular over the last five years to help with kind of that data um, um, 
uh, preparation that, and discovery that you need to use against the data before you apply the statistical algorithms to it. We need an environment, a complete environment, that um, provides you with access to the Microsoft frameworks and packages or the uh, open source frameworks and packages such as PyTorch, TensorFlow, and Scikit-Learn. We have um, the resources where you can learn more about those. And then finally, you need an environment that's easy to work in. And so I'm going to talk about uh, managed instance because it is an Azure uh, environment that has all the abilities and capabilities and advantages and benefits of, an, of a cloud-based infrastructure. Then over time, you will learn, and we do have examples for which algorithms and ontologies work best for which use cases or scenarios. We have many examples from the field. So let's start with the team data science process. I'm going to go and show you this link in a minute, but I wanted to just step through real quick the um, five aspects of the process. So the first is really understanding the business need, defining an objective. So a couple examples I had recently, one, I had an HR group who wanted to know if they, if there was bias in their interviewing process, you know, was there discrimination on, you know, key uh, protected classes like uh, gender or um, um, race. And so based on that, a data model was created that used like the information from the interviewer um, and inter information such as notes from the interview itself. And we processed that through a model and determined there was no bias, which was great. Um, I had another customer who wanted to do a customer personalization engine at a point of sale in one of their retail stores. They wanted to be able to uh, instead of having a customer see, you know, a coupon, cut it out and bring it to the store, we wanted the data model to understand the buying patterns of that customer so that when they came up to the register with their purchases, if there was a coupon available for one of those purchases, that they would get that discount automatically, which would definitely increase, you know, that customer coming back to that store in particular. And so we, we built a model that would work against various information. So all the, the customer information, the transactions that they've purchased over time, the reward number that they can tie together, as well as vendor information about product discounts that were gonna be offered at that point in time. So at a point of sale, you, the model would bring all that together and understand um, you know, what was happening um, with that customer and could provide a really great customer experience. Uh, the third example that I had from last year was really the um, an oil and gas company. They had these oil rigs out in the ocean that they had to monitor and maintain and staff. And so there was a, a lot of information coming in, uh, IoT information coming in from sensors and uh, metrics that were being captured on those rigs. And they were coming into data models that would help um, predict when maintenance was going to be happening so they can you know, send out teams to these environments that are very difficult to get to, and um, as well as productivity of those rigs, you know, how productive was the, was the rig in producing, how, many, how much oil was it producing? And so we had a number of models that helped uh, that company determine what those were. Now, each of those scenarios has very specific data sources. So like the interviewing one versus, you know, I described the, that and the, the customer uh, databases for the um, personalization engine. And obviously, IoT data is very different data to deal with than, you know, referential data for the oil rig. So it, the, the data scientists do work with various, you know, types of data, structured, unstructured, streaming, you know, or hot data, as we call it, or warm data that's in a, in a data warehouse. And so the data scientists do spend time with the business to really understand what they need so that they can determine what the data sources are based on available um, schemas, et cetera, uh, uh, in the enterprise. 
Then they work closely with other team members, such as um, you know DBAs and data engineers, to acquire and understand the data. DBAs and engineers obviously know what the tools are from that list, um, you know that I showed you previously of um, what you know is available from um, SQL Server to help bring in that data. How do you ingest the data? You know, the data scientists will want certain sample sizes. So if it's a billion rows of data, they'll probably want like 100 million rows to sample with and build their models on that are randomly um, selected from the database to have a representative uh, sample, a good representative sample. Um, and, and the data scientists, and I'll show you this in a minute, how you would explore the data. And then the data has to be updated. The model has to be updated because new data comes in or they discover another source that they want to include. Maybe like in the oil rig, they wanted to include weather as part of those models because of the, you know, just drastic weather that you would see in the ocean. And so later on, we updated the model to include weather, which was a live stream weather.com type of data. Um, and so that had an impact on the model and the type of algorithms they would use. So you're updating as you update the data. And then the, it goes back to the realm of the, you know, the data scientists in their data science laboratories as they're doing their models, their experimentations, they're creating the model, they're training the model, they're getting scores out of the model that they would implement into um, and deploy, which is the next step into applications, as I described in those three examples. So you're operationalizing it. And that requires another level of software engineering from .NET programmers or database developers to actually implement it into an existing production work stream. So, you know, like a uh, interviewing um, process or a customer point of sale where it's also that system's also tracking purchases and different transactions. Or in the case of the oil rig, the different types of IoT data that's coming in. So these are existing processes that you then have to implement the models and that requires software engineering. Finally, a customer acceptance is really, you know, back to the business and is it working? Is the model giving them the results that they're looking for? Um, and so in order to, you know, take that, we can um, yeah, take that feedback and update your model and rescore and retrain your model. So let me show you the, the site right now here. And you'll get these slides so you can also go to these sites. The, the team data science process documentation is very well done. There's a whole uh, overview. There's um, drills down into you know, life cycle roles, project planning, development practices, how to operationalize some examples, tools, training, and other related sources. So if you look at the team data science process, this sends you out to um, definitions of uh, what, is, what are the key components of the team data science process? And then it'll go down and, and describe those uh, components. And data life cycles, for example, has you know the, the uh, components I just shared with you. Uh, here's a diagram that puts that into a picture. Who are the resources that are involved? Various resources. When you look at the phases of work versus the resources, here are the different activities for each of those resources. Um, there's project structures that you could create, such as a charter, uh, reports, model reports. And then um, what would you need in terms of infrastructure outside of the people? What are they gonna be using um, specific for that project? And then here's kind of an intersection of roles versus infrastructure, tools, and then some next steps. So you can click on all these and there's a ton of information here on this site. So in, in summary, here's some of the different things that data, the team works on. So the data scientists are really um, the folks that are uh, doing all the modeling and and have the experience with statistical analytics uh, and advanced analytics and all the different algorithms. And so they're building those notebooks. And so a notebook is very important in the data science lifecycle because it captures how the model was created. What was the infrastructure that was used? What was the data that was used? 
What was the algorithms and the statistical analysis that were used? Um, and so you can get an idea of uh, how the model evolved over time. It, it keeps track of everything that the data scientists did to get that model to a state where it can be used. And so there's a lot of um, empirical information that's important in there. Um, there's samples, outputs of you know queries they may have done, of outputs of the models themselves, and then the final model. It can be reused for similar scenarios. It can be redone as new data sources and new patterns are found um, and be, all can be kept in the same notebook. So it's a great empirical, historical uh, view of how that model was created. And that's the place where the data scientist works. Um, the team also involves you know, the DBAs and data engineers and helping to get the data prepared and the environments ready, the database is ready for um, the data scientists, as well as um, once the model is finished, then you have the software engineers actually putting it into those work streams. So within <coughs> SQL Server, <coughs> you have access to machine learning services. And so for SQL Server DB, You have languages for the data scientists that you know that are familiar that they can use to explore the data, whether it's R, Python, or SQL. It, the uh, process includes then the training of those models on SQL Server using R and Python embedded within T-SQL in the stored procedure to actually um, train the model using the sample data that was provided by the database uh, engineer. Then the data scientists will work with the software engineers, SQL developers, DBAs, .NET, to deploy these into the work streams, workloads, and production, and then can be shared on any device and any application that um, may be uh, leveraging this, this model. So the SQL Server uh, family um, has a huge platform to support analytics and AI. Um, in the top here, the, there's five categories, and then starting with information management. So you really have how are you ingesting the data, how are you bringing the data, what is the data, how does it, how do you describe the data through the Azure Data Catalog, what are the mechanisms you use to bring the data in, just uh, ingesting the data such as Azure Data Factory or you're using SQL Server integration services, uh, pipelines. And, and so information management is a huge part of this process because it's very important that you get the data. And with machine learning, I often tell people, you know, there's this whole process around data warehousing where you're cleaning the data. But in machine learning, such as like used for fraud detection, you need that data that... Um, is unique and that has a different pattern. Um, so it, it's different that way. You, you do, um, you know, extract load transform um, versus extract transform load oftentimes in order to get all the data that you need for machine learning purposes, which needs all the data, not, you know, cl totally clean data sometimes. So um, that's important to know. The big data, um, environments that we have created, because these are huge data sets oftentimes that machine learning needs, hundreds of millions of rows, billions of rows. Um, we have environments called Azure Synapse Analytics has machine learning services in it. Um, I work on the uh, machine learning services for big data clusters. And so these are very important big data environments. Uh, machine learning services falls under an intelligence and advanced analytics. That's my space here. And so I have to provide those services to all the other platforms. Then finally, once the models are done and it's creating output and answers, you want to visualize it. And so we have some examples here of visualization tools, um, Power BI, reporting services for anal regular analytics, and then ML services for additional, more complex uh, visualization um, of statistical graphs and cluster algorithms and um, and, and, and logistic algorithms and, you know, different um, charts that are specific to statistical analysis. 
Finally, when you're building the solution, you, <clears throat> finally, when you're building the solution, you have the Azure templates and galleries, Microsoft field experience, and communities out there to help you. Now, in terms of building a solution, this link here um, brings you to a site that helps you like take all those products and you know how do you actually build the solution with that whole list of products I just shared. <clears throat> and so here's a workshop where we're talking about SQL ground to cloud. So it's really a, um, a workshop that helps you design a solution where you have information, um, whether you're leaving it in the, the you know, on premise and you're trying to integrate it in a hybrid solution to a cloud environment. So say you're keeping all your raw data uh, for regulatory purposes in on premise, but you're doing your aggregated analytics out in the cloud. Um, or you're doing your modeling out in the cloud by, you know, sending agents down to your on-premise databases. There's there's a number of scenarios here, and it depends on, you know, what you're trying to solve. Here's the steps for um, this workshop and the types of things that it'll walk you through. Um, the it, This workshop, you know, mirrors, you know, what I was describing in terms of understanding the business problem looking at some business scenarios there's a few here um, one of them the first one is really modernizing to a newer version of sql um, the second one is moving everything to the cloud or even a multi-cloud uh, environment and then other uh, the third one is really around how do you then implement machine learning and artificial intelligence uh, prediction capabilities this lists like uh, some of the technologies you may, you know, use. The design matrix helps you identify, you know, what is the purpose of this project? Uh, what are you trying to achieve? Is it cost management, security, um, you know, supportability of existing um, procedures, etc. <clears throat> and then a way to, you know, take that solution, put it in a presentation that can be reviewed by your leadership. Take a look at that. And so this is just a summary of the SQL Server and Azure SQL um, environments. You know, what are the capabilities? SQL has been around for decades. So there's a lot of really great features that makes it easier to work in the SQL uh, platform. So up top here in your data scientist workstation, you know, you're sending your scripts to SQL Server. There's executions here in using T-SQL, sending results back. Um, to the model, <clears throat> then that model can be put in an application, and then through a, a stored procedure, you're using that uh, to again query your SQL, um, bring back the results, scores, and plots back to the application, and displaying it either in Power BI or um, our Python and other environments. So the, the hybrid modeling and deployment. Um, that we offer as a capability with SQL Server on-premise or Azure SQL really helps in, in training and deploying models as you're moving data um, from you know, on-premises to other environments into a cloud environment. And then you're able to track your models in production in different devices and different environments, <clears throat> capture some telemetry, and then retrain the, the, prod, the models automatically. The in-database machine learning that we talk about is really um, improving the experience from your standard database on the left, where you um, just had it separate from your um, data science laboratory, from your applications, versus um, in-database learning, where we've introduced that um, in SQL Server and are out now introducing it in Azure SQL machine uh, managed instance so that your model resides where your data is. So there's no more moving the data around. Um, you can constantly score and rescore the models as new data comes in to the SQL server. Then you can send that output to the application uh, and the predictions that those models have made. And then the applications themselves will be sending back new transactions and the whole cycle starts over again. So when you're not in doing in database uh, machine learning, you know there's a lot more steps, there's a lot more different environments that are separate, um, and a lot more complexity. So this on the right is really simplifying that and 
um, you, you get like the advantages of the, the core that are, is available to the SQL Server, the security that's available to there's a lot less things to worry about and um, while you're doing your models and the data that's there. So I want to share with you um, this site called SQL Workshops that you may be familiar with if you use SQL for a while. And we have a section called Machine Learning where we have some, um, I want to walk through some notebooks that we have out here. It's, there's various folders in here. Recently we've built a number of Python notebooks. And I'll walk you through a couple of these notebooks to show that whole process that I've been describing. How is What's the code behind installation and setup of your environment, of your database? How are you exploring and visualizing the data? How are you training the data? And then how do you, you know, imp implement it into production? So let's walk through this one. So it opens up into a notebook, and you can run this in um, uh, SQL Server Manage, uh, Management Studio. You can run all these commands in there. <clears throat> and so this is a, uh, an example using a New York City taxi database that we have uh, for predicting uh, taxi fares and tips. So first, we, we do want to set up the SQL Server instance um, and make sure that you know we have a, a configuration that, that it will work for this example. Then we want to enable, you know, external scripts. So we want to enable the man manage learning services on that environment. And this is the code right here. And you can run it in your um, SSMS. Then we want to, uh, when you install the machine learning services, you will automatically get uh, R and Python. And there's uh, documentation that shares what version you have. Um, running there. And this just is the, the code that shows that these are both functional. <clears throat> and then you're ready to download your database. And so these are the instructions to download the database. Here's the select statements to query it once um, you've uh, installed it, just to take a quick look. You know, it's got information like the medallion ID, the license, the vendor, rate codes, um, the, these are transactions of each um, taxi trip. There's 1.7 million uh, rows. And then here are just some simple queries to uh, look at the data in aggregate. Next, we'll go down to um, exploring and visualizing the data. So this one will allow you to actually look at the data more from a statistical um, set of charts, such as histograms, scatter plots, and box plots based on algorithms. So we'll create a plot as of our binary data. Here's the um, code that you can run. Then you want to test your stored procedure, and here's the... Uh, hex output on the bottom of the plot. And then you'll use Python from an external client to create a graph. So whether you're a beginner or if you're an expert in this, here are some examples you can um, use to learn. So this one ends up, uh, we wanted to see a, a plot that showed the tip amount by fair amount. I'm going to jump down to the train and save the Python model using T-SQL. So here we're, um, again, we're looking at the sample data and then we're going to split it up into training and testing sets. And this is, here are the procedures that you set up. Then we're going to execute the test split procedure. And then here um, is the code that, that 
creates a stored procedure called pi train scikit. Copy that, run it, and then you want to insert that model into a table of New York City taxi models. So that's an important uh, note there that you're actually inserting the train model into the table. You want to see the model, so you just do a select star. Here's the model output on the bottom. <clears throat> and then the next store procedure uses Microsoft Rebus Scale Pi package, uh, which is a new package for Python. Um, and and uh, we want to apply, you know, some objects, transformations, and algorithms. And then you insert that model again into the table, check the contents, and there's your completed model. Take that model and now you can um, go and run a batch and single score prediction. Feel free to walk through this as well. Um, this is a, just an example of how it would score in a batch process or a single scoring uh, prediction model. Here's the sample code for the batch. And then querying the database is 660,000 rows affected. And prints it all out here. So please feel free to use SQL Works to get up to speed to just try out some of our notebooks and, and see how they work for you. And so starting out in machine learning, there's already enough to learn uh, in terms of the whole data science process, in terms of what machine learning, how it works, how notebooks work, how the languages work. Um, so why not have a, a, an environment that's already set up for you, ready to go? Um, so we have a machine uh, learning services in the Azure SQL Managed Instance preview available now. It's a worldwide preview. We started uh, in June, and we've got several dozen customers on it right now. They were on our prior preview using SQL Database. Uh, with machine learning services, <clears throat> but we wanted to help them. They, a lot of them were interested in modernizing, so getting to the cloud. So we wanted to give them an environment where they didn't have to worry about, you know, the infrastructure. We have scripts that help set up the ML services in their managed instance subscription, and then they can move and migrate their models, their libraries, data, um, against which to run those models in this managed instance. So they're getting the entire instance and not just the database access. So think of it as like you have an apartment in an apartment building. You don't have to worry about the boiler system or the HVAC. All you would have to worry about is your apartment. And um, you have the whole apartment, you have the whole instance to work with databases or multiple databases and not just a database. So we invited our customers to take their existing models, their, their existing data, run the scripts in R or Python, whatever language was created, do your data prep and data processing, you know, using those languages, take their models, train them again, make sure everything works the same. This should have 100% uh, parity to the actual um, uh, SQL database environment. And then it's a preview, so you know we, we ask that people wait until the uh, general availability, which will be in December, um, to put it into production, but you can certainly build models in this environment. Um, in a few minutes, um, I'm going to show you what the managed instance preview looks like. Uh, but first, I want to talk a little bit about the Azure SQL database family and where managed instance falls into that, in that set of services. Uh, so we have... Um, infrastructure as a service or platform as a service. And this is a platform, certainly. And so this is where SQL uh, 
Azure SQL Managed Instance resides. It, it is a platform as a service. We're trying to make it as easy as possible for you to get up and running, to have all the security features available. I'll go through those in a minute. Um, but easy, familiar, you know, running, has all the SQL um, capabilities that you need, all the and certain tools you're going to need, and that flexibility that the cloud affords you. So it is a lot of our customers are very interested in modernization. And so it, it provides an environment where they can do that. It's fully managed for you. Um, the VNet integrated services with your programming uh, model uh, simplifies everything for you in terms of migrating and modernizing. So when we assess the type of uh, managed instance you'll need, you know, you don't have to re-architect or rebuild your apps. And we have a number of uh, you know, tools that come with it to help you migrate. So to help you rehost everything, refactor your database or re-architect and rebuild as needed for new applications. And so there's also a set of fully managed optimization services after your migration that you can leverage. So the four main things that you would want to do if you want to get in a modernized environment, want to get into SQL managed instances, um, this is the managed instance is 100% compatible with your SQL DB on-prem. It's built and leverages the same infrastructure as Azure SQL database. So you have all those uh, improved productivity, improved um, cost uh, potentially with, uh, you know, and scalability of your environment as you need for different database sizes. Certainly security and isolation are important. Um, privacy as well as secure express route and VPN connectivity is, is available. And then we have different tiers which have competitive pricing for a flexible um, environment. So it is the best of both worlds where you have all your sort of rich SQL capabilities are used to. Um, so when you migrate and modernize, you um, you get the advantages of what is in PaaS in terms of high availability, built-in compliance, security, automatic tuning, and updates and patches. This is just an architecture that shows um, what I described earlier. Let me take a look at that. And then the service tiers, you've got general purpose ones. Oftentimes our customers use this for development or testing environment. Um, and then business critical ones where our, um, you know, which are best for applications that are, um, you know, sensitive and have co-located co compute and storage, for example, um, and have, and you have to worry about impact of maintenance operations. So let me take a, a tour of the managed instance preview that we have right now. Here's the link and the description um, of the, the uh, managed instance machine learning preview. You should be able to, once you're in this environment, you'll have your machine learning services turned on and you should be able to run uh, existing um, scripts and, and packages um, easily. It's a very fast process to migrate. We've had customers do it in like a week uh, once the environment is set up. You should be able to operate in this environment um, to train your, your models in database and you should see the performance differences as well as the, you know, the ease of use in having it in database versus uh, out, out of database. And then you can, you know, ha has the capabilities to allow you to deploy those models um, and scripts using uh, stored procedures. Um, we ask that you wait until we go general availability in December in order to deploy in production. And then as, as a platform, it really, you know, has to support everything that you would use, whether it's the um, R and Python that's already included in machine learning, or if it's open source packages and frameworks such as PyTorch, SensorFlow, and Scikit-Learn, um, as well as all the Microsoft packages that come you know, for Python and R. So here's the instructions to sign up for the preview. It's done through the um, 
CSS ticketing system, helps us keep track. Um, we also then have access to a group of engineers in CSS who know how to support this preview. And then there's some other you know, links here on the bottom where you might want to refer to um, in terms of the key differences um, from the SQL Server database machine learning services. This is on Azure, um, all the different um, examples on how to use Python scripts or R scripts, and some basic SQL Server learning documentation you want, might want to refer to. So in terms of democratization, user experience is going to be the differentiator for us. We will use Azure Data Studio. So think of everything that you would do in SQL Server Management Studio and having that um, all that code you know, behind the scenes now in Azure Data Studio and the Azure Data Studio environment, giving you an interface that's much easier to um, use. This will help support whatever role you're in, whether you're a DBA, a data engineer, a data scientist, or data developer. The data, Azure Data Studio um, with machine learning services, and I'm going to show you three demos, will show you know, the, a new user interface that's much easier to use if you're just getting up and running in machine learning than to help you through those, those initial um, tasks that you would need to do to, to get up and running in machine learning. So the, I'm going to demo a few few of them here. Um, my um, coworker Julie Cosmarno is actually the one with the voiceover on these, and she's going to demo installing and managing packages, importing or viewing models, and making predictions. So let's start with um, let's start with this installing and managing packages.
So the second demo that you will walk through is how to actually import or view models. Very important as we allow uh, customers to bring in existing models. The third demo is going to be make predictions.
So those are the demos. I want to thank you for your time today. Here's my contact information at Microsoft. If you have any feedback or ideas, please um, email me. Thanks again. Have a great day. Enjoy the conference.